Surviving infidelity. I still hate them but I am not mad anymore. I caught her in another affair in January. She was also messaging another two men but hadn't met with them, yet she broke down a few nights later about how she hated being in the house with us, me and two kids, and just wanted to leave. Her affair partner offered to let her move in. So, she left me and the kids. At this point, I despise him and what he is doing. He is also still married, and my soon-to-be ex-wife is living in the house with him, his wife, and his two kids. It ripped my heart out and hurt so bad for a while. But now I am just disappointed. He promises he will divorce her soon and marry my soon-to-be ex-wife. His wife is apparently unaware of this, and is allowing my soon-to-be ex-wife to stay because of false statements given to her about me being abusive, which is preying upon a past trauma his wife had. I have been told myriads of reasons why the affair happened. Everything from my medications make her think I don't find her attractive, to if I really cared, I would have searched harder for proof and not let her have the alone time she said she needed. And now I just don't care. She proves to me and the kids nearly daily that she still cannot be trusted and her priorities are her and her alone. She still wants to talk to me at night when her affair partner goes to bed and cannot talk because of his wife, she still tries to be physical with me, but I just feel nothing for her anymore but disdain. She wants to tell me about her day and I realized I don't care and it's boring. I don't value her opinion on any topic she wants to discuss. The only things I really listen to now are kid related. She is also avoiding all of her friends and won't tell them anything, so they are reaching out to me. She gets upset at almost every change I make to my home. I have to remind her she doesn't live here anymore, and when I remind her that she left, I get told she felt like I was making her do it and doesn't understand why we couldn't keep on like nothing happened, since it was working fine for all those months. I am not sure where that leaves me at. I hate them but I'm just too tired to be mad, or give a damn about most of what she is saying now. I don't know where to go from here. Edit. Thank you all for your input and advice. I am trying to do many of the things suggested and obviously there are parts I cannot mention. I have been talking to lawyers but can only go so far on that right now. I am documenting a lot. The kids are in therapy and I am getting some help and will be in therapy soon, for many of you all's advice. Now for the top comments. You are now in the stage of indifference, and you need to let the affair partner's wife know what is going on. She is being used as you are and it is time to end the charade. They both deserve what is coming. She is aware of the affair. He has blocked me through his cell provider to keep me from communicating with his wife. Hell would freeze over before that SOB got away with this. He is a scum bucket and he may be abusing his wife. Expose her to everyone, no more games and do not let her come back. The level of disrespect she has shown you, it's over. Karma is probably going to rain havoc on them both. Good luck. Stop talking to her at night, tell her if she wants pillow talk, go to her AP. Her friends ask questions, tell them everything. Stop protecting her honor. Document the fact that she's abandoned her home, film yourself taking care of the house and the kids. It will help you in court when it comes time to discuss custody. I don't know where to go from here. Lawyer last month. Her friends ask questions, tell them everything. Stop protecting her honor. Biggest mistake everyone makes. There's catharsis in speaking out, and they already decided their reputation and relationships aren't worth more than their cheating partner. Not only is letting them skate while you suffer in silence unjust, it's letting them skate. They cared zero for your pain, but we always look to defend them from their choice to hurt us. Don't know why. On top of that, they invariably lie at your expense to protect their reputation if they know you won't say anything. Best case, it's a mutual breakup, and worst case, she's telling people you mistreat her which is likely happening right now, considering she used it as a monkey branch, and by the time you say anything, it's too late. People always believe the first story they hear about a situation they aren't directly involved in. Thank you. This is insightful. Get a lawyer and start working on legal protections for you and your kids. She seems very erratic and doesn't have any of your interests at heart. It seems you're not happy with your situation, so a formal arrangement to share custody and separate finances etc. will be beneficial, because you can then go no contact with her, apart from co-parenting communications. Divorce may be an option for you after you've given yourself some time to decide. Either way something has to change. You will never heal with her in your face all the time, you need space, you need your own time for yourself. The prospects of her changing look bleak mate, I hope you find healing and happiness with or without her in your life. It's about time you out your own happiness as a priority.
We are in the middle of a bankruptcy and she had to specify a budget to them which included what insurance she covers and the child support she is paying me. They told me this will help me later as she has documented what she is currently doing, and will give a good basis for future action. She had to list what she contributes to a fair partner's household. So I do have things documented. A lot beyond that too. Bankruptcy lawyer said no new lawyers right now, or it will muck that up. So we are both stuck. Now for the next story. She just won't go away. This is kind of a I need advice, rant, inside post. My ex and I have been separated since May, divorced since September, and she somehow always finds a way to sneak into my life in one way or another. It's an email asking if I have something I forgot to pack months and months ago. Two months ago, she had packages delivered here on accident, and we had to have a mutual friend pick it up. Now she has all of the sudden found out that we owe additional state taxes from three years ago when we were still married. Mind you, she's the one that cheated and wanted out of our marriage, but for someone who wants out of our marriage, she has done a good job of randomly appearing in my life. The second part is, she won't stop reaching out to my friends to talk, or hang out, or want to meet up. Obviously they let me know, but they are people who are only friends with her because of me, why continuously hassle them? I cannot understand the thought process here. On top of that, we moved to another city a few years back, but she is going down to the city we lived in before, not sure why, she didn't have any friends left there, and she reached out to my friends to see if they wanted to catch up. One of my best friends still lives there and she even reached out to here to catch up. This friend hasn't spoken to her since all the cheating stuff happened. Can someone please help me understand what is going on, and maybe help me come up with something remedy this issue? Also, every time she pops up, it makes me feel like oh have taken three steps back. Which, is very unfortunate, because I have made great strides in my journey of healing. Now for the top advice. Fairly simple really OP. That grass that she thought was greener. Turns out that it tastes like crap. She's living a groundhog day life now. Every day is the same. Every time she opens her eyes in the morning, she's waking up to yet another karma day. That coworker whose D she couldn't get enough of. Just a distant memory now. Oh, for the good old days when her life was simple. What you have to do OP is to develop an attitude of total indifference. Don't react to anything. No communication. No conversation. Don't react in any way. Any reaction is just ego kibble for her. If something is mistakenly delivered, just post it to her parents. She'll get the message. She has blown it. End of. Good luck. My favorite saying about the greener grass is, the grass on the other side only appeared greener, because they weren't watering their own lawn. It is all about control. She no longer has any direct control over you. That won't stop her from trying. If she has no current information about you it will motivate her to reach out to your friends. Every time she pops up, it makes me feel like oh have taken three steps back. This is the whole point, she does not want you to move on. This is best explanation here and somewhat what I would have posted. OP please read this because this what she is trying to do. It gives her validation that what she did was not that bad and keeps you tethered. She can't completely let go of you, it's like the analogy about the monkey with their hand stuck in a jar. If they let go they will be free, but to do so, they will lose what they are holding. It is not regret. It is selfishness and greed. Go no contact and let your friends know that you have done so. Tell them what she is doing is none of your business, and that you would appreciate it if they don't share anything about you should they choose to talk to her. If more packages come return to sender. My ex would do this as well in the two months immediately after I moved out. Where's the household underscore item? How do I reset the router? Could you come over and help me move the entertainment center? I finally replied with words to the effect of, how do you sleep at night? You cheat on me for six years, and when you're caught, you make up lies about how it's all my fault, you call 911 on me, you tell the kids I was physically abusive, yet, you can just call me up and ask me to help you with the household. And you feel no guilt about this at all? Never got asked again after that. Next story. A little reflection and optimism. This may will mark a year since finding out that my ex-wife was in an affair with an old crush for over a year, and exed at another a guy before that. We were in a dead bedroom the entire marriage. I planned on leaving on my own if it didn't get better. She kept it affair going at his place, and our place. Unprotected action, and a pregnancy scare. She even let the loser play a specific game on my PS4, that I bought just for her. She hid everything through six months of marriage counseling. 
She tried apologizing repeatedly, but enough was enough. I filed immediately. The divorce was ugly. She became rude after finding out that we wouldn't be splitting assets, I paid for everything myself before marriage. The divorce finalized in September. I struggled for a long time. I'm grateful for my family, friends and therapy that helped me get to where I am today. I was no contact for almost six months until she messaged me right before New Year's. She said that she wanted to apologize again, and she never meant to hurt me. She asked for my forgiveness again. Finally, she said that I'm a good man, and not to let the pain of her betrayal ruin my next relationship. I didn't respond. I won't lie, that message knocked me back down for a while. I've done a lot of thinking since getting that message. We had so many great times together, despite the dead bedroom. I really thought she was my soulmate. I did everything for her. Looking back, I realized that she had issues, and I learned a lot from this mess. This is her loss. Can't believe that I put up with lies in a dead bedroom for years. I'm extremely embarrassed about being so naive, but it is what is it. Fast forward to today, I would say I'm doing much better. I moved back home to save for my first house. I got a promotion at my job. I'm working on dropping my quarantine pounds. I've been on a few great dates. Sometimes, I look back and think of the good times I had with my ex. The future we could have had. I thought I was treating her so well. I cooked, helped her travel more, bought her nice stuff etc. My women relatives, friends and therapists all say that I'm a gem when it comes to the current selection of men. I wouldn't go that far lol, but I did my absolute best to make my ex happy. I'm looking forward to improving myself and reaching my goals. One day, I hope I find someone genuine who will show me what a normal relationship is supposed to feel like. Until then, I'm enjoying the single life. Hang in there everyone. Now for the top comments. Good job on not messaging her back. That's key. Don't involve yourself with her again. You may have had great times with her, but just let those be memories. Congratulations for coming out on the other side with such a positive attitude. Good on you for not responding to your ex's message. She was probably hoovering and trying to get some sort of validation slash reaction slash absolution from you. I also like that you have incorporated the concept of radical acceptance or it is what it is in your healing process. I think posts like yours will help a lot of people still struggling with the betrayal and the end of their relationships. Best of luck to you, your future looks bright. Good on you. You should be really proud of yourself and where your life is going. You grabbed the bull by the horns. Don't beat yourself up about your naivety. I'd call it going into a relationship in the best of intentions just with someone who turned out to be the wrong person. I'm sure that you have learned a lot and won't let history repeat itself. Hindsight is 2020 and I'm sure if you could replay that level again you would have done things differently. Well done on the promo and I look forward to hearing about a fantastic new house. You're on the right path. You're very lucky to be able to have a clean break with no kids and fully go no contact. Use your new knowledge and try your best to fully vet a new woman. I'm in the camp that legal marriage no longer serves a purpose under the law and would avoid myself. I'm okay with monogamy and living together and sharing a life, but once you sign a legally binding contract it gets super messy when things don't work out. Now for the last story. One day this week I didn't think about the betrayal until I first sat in my car to drive to work. Tuesday in fact. I woke up, brushed my teeth, got dressed, made my lunch for the day, had a cold glass of orange juice, it tasted funny because of the toothpaste, and then headed out. I locked the door, I slung my bag over my shoulder and I headed for my car. I opened the car door, I slung in my backpack over to the passenger side and I sat in the driver's seat. I closed the door, put my seatbelt on and turned on the ignition. Then it all came back to me. I was betrayed. I still hurt. It's okay. But you know what? For the first time in almost three months, it wasn't the first and only thing on my mind that morning when I woke up. In the half hour or so it took me to get to that point I was relatively human again. I was able to unconsciously be normal for the briefest amount of time. It was great. I'd forgotten what that was like. I consider this a success. In our shoes, the small victories mean everything. Take them where you can. I hope you find a small victory somewhere this weekend and can share it with us all. I think it'd be good to share them and inspire others to know that we are doing okay. No matter how small or insignificant that victory may be. I saw my cheating ex at Best Buy retail store cause obviously electronic fries is closed for good. I was there to buy computer equipment. As I passed by her to check out, she looked miserable and I totally ignored her like if she was a ghost. 
I guess a small victory for me? That's a victory in itself. I had a similar thing happen a few years ago where I was cheated on by an ex and I bumped into them at the store. They looked miserable and me being me, went over to talk to them, it's a horrible cycle to be in. You did great by just walking away. That sounds pretty great. Progress. I hope to get to that point, myself, someday. The car journey to and from work used to be my torment. It was the one place there I was truly alone and didn't need to pretend anything, it was awful. Even had to give up my car in the end as it was a guilt present and brought it all back. I'm glad you were making those small steps, they get bigger and then before you know it you're running a marathon. It's almost exactly two years ago for me my life crashed, I gave him another chance which was the worst time of my life before discovering he had not ended it six months later. This time last year waiting for the divorce, finalized in July, I am now finding myself again and so much happier. One year post-divorce this year. One thing I will say is never compromise and put yourself first. Good luck. I think this is why it hit me as soon as I entered the car. The car journey to and from work is a blessing and a curse at times. I've made so much progress in these journeys, I have so much farther to go though, through self-reflection, and thought that I probably should be grateful for but some days they are really hard. Did you ever find yourself driving with no radio slash music playing because you were so in thought, and not thinking of the silence because in your head, it was so loud and full of worry and uncertainty? I've had it happen so many times and it shows just how much these betrayals affect us deeply. Nothing else matters when you are so deep in thought. I hope you are doing okay. Thank you for your kind words. And that's it for this video guys, if you have thoughts to share, leave a comment below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you like this content. I'll catch you in the next one. Good day everyone.